Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Bark House Live. I'm Kathy Tarchione, and this is the co-host, uh, Coco Dean. He's from Bark House in New Mexico, Las Cruces, New Mexico. Good morning, Coco. Good morning, Kathy. Thanks for having me. Uh, well, actually, this is your show, and this is the, the launch of your show. And we wanted to talk about what the Bark House is all about. So what is the Bark House all about? Well, Bark House is something exciting that we're trying to bring here to Las Cruces, New Mexico, and to serve uh, southern New Mexico. Um, it's basically a compilation of several uh, nonprofit organizations that we've already been operating for a time. And we're going to compile them all together to be a solution-based um, facility that you know will help with New Mexico's pet overpopulation issue. Um, we here are seeing a whole lot of animals, you know, being euthanized um, just due to overpopulation in the shelters, and you know, unfortunately, not enough space in the rescues and things like that is causing us to see adoptable animals, good animals, um, being put down, and we're we're looking to solve that issue. Okay, so wh where did the idea come from? Um, this is a passion project by uh, a good friend and a mentor now of mine, Kelly Barker. She has been um, an advocate for animals for many, many years, and she has put together you know, these different nonprofits uh, separately that had a very, very pointed mission. And uh, it was always the idea to bring it um, you know, into one facility that could accommodate these, uh, these solutions, if you will. And, uh, you know, this was basically her idea, her vision, her dream, and um, we're now working to make it a reality. Well, Kelly's been a, a dear friend of mine for many years, and boy, I could I could totally attest to her ability to get things done. And now that uh, you're on board too, Coco, I can't see anything but greatness for the bark house so let's let's go through exactly what the components of bark house are at this she wasn't with us for a second there okay let's let's talk about the low cost spay and neuter oh yeah so um one of the main components of our facility will be uh we'll have a high volume low cost spay and neuter clinic which you know in talking with many of the animal advocates you know, at the task force meetings and things like that, that's a much needed resource that just doesn't exist uh, in our area right now. Not at least not one that operates full time that, you know, the public can access. Uh, so we will have a vet team dedicated specifically to high volume, low cost spay and neuter. So we can really, really attack that population issue that we that exists currently. That way, you know, in the future, we're not having unwanted litters, you know, and that can produce thousands and thousands of animals, which, which is what has contributed to our, our overpopulation, our overpopulation issue as we see it now. So, you know, our, I call our magic number 15,000 is what we're trying to accomplish every single year, spay and neuter. So, you know, if we're operating full time, six days a week, trying to knock out, you know, 50 in any given work day, we can achieve that number every year. So, I mean, that would be a huge, huge, um, dent in in our solving our overpopulation issue alone just that one uh, division and uh you know it's statewide it's recognized as a need um just this past year senate bill 57 was passed which makes an allotment for um for spay and neuter across the state so even at the state level they know that spay and neuter is necessary in order to you know help the problem that new mexico as a whole faces Okay, so now let me ask you this. With with all of the products that you have for the Bark House, what is the current situation right now? I know that vaccination and microchip and, and spay and neuter, are, are the shelters doing this right now? And if they are, is it very costly? Or why is this making such a big difference? Well, spay and neuter right now is being done um, in, in by private vets ultimately. So we have, you know, pop-up clinics that come through and, you know, can start to somewhat make a dent in the, in that issue. And they're, they're able to spay and neuter animals, um, you know, sometimes two days a week and sometimes not even, they, they don't operate on, on any given week. So it doesn't exist in, in a full-time, uh, on a full-time basis. So, and when those pop-ups do come up, they're, 
they're full. I mean, they, they, the need is always there. It's a constant, constant need. So we've got, you know, it happening on a part-time basis when we've got more than a full-time problem. Okay. So what you're saying is that it's not really organized. It's just kind of helter skelter and they, they let the, the community know when the pot is going to be out there. And uh, then somebody has got to do the scheduling. You got to do the organizing. You got to get the, the pets in and out. And uh, it, it can be not only consuming, but trying to get volunteers that are going to help and paid employees. It, it, it really takes a, a village to Correct. get it all together. <laughs> exactly. I mean, so, everybody's working. Yeah. These people are definitely working hard with the best of intentions. The problem is, you know, what I've noticed is a common theme in all the discussions I've had with these task force members and what, what have you is resources. They need more resources. Yeah. And so, you know, the shelter is doing, you know, what they can to keep up with, you know, the spay and neuter. Um, and they do offer some, some public, but, you know, they've got their population of animals that they have to, that their vets have to take care of. And, you know, it's, it's just a very, very daunting task. So, you know, unfortunately we're not meeting the need right now and not even really coming close. So okay. we're trying to provide that resource um, that everybody has been asking for uh, to really, really see this through and, and make a big impact. Okay, so that then that brings us to the vaccination and the microchips. And a lot of people say, oh, my dog doesn't need to have or my cat doesn't need to have uh, um, vaccinations because they're inside. And they don't realize that that's part of a health issue. Right. You know, uh, so I think that education is also important, too, which Barkhouse also brings to the community as an educational component of why spay, neuter, vaccination and microchips are are very important. If you lose your dog or, and your dog is running around the neighborhood and if they're not microchipped, then shame on you. Right. right? <laughs> no, that's exactly right. And same if they're not vaccinated, you don't know who they're going to be, what other animals they may be. Whoops. Okay, so let's go to the next slide here. Okay, and then there's transport, which is a, a fabulous component. Do you want to share with us about uh, how this works, Coco? Yeah, so transport, we even without a facility, we've already been operating um, transporting of animals. So one of the things that we've done to combat, you know, the existing pet population, the overpopulation, if you will, um, is we have been taking animals from the shelter, from rescues, you know, sourcing our animals where the, the need needs to be met. And we are able to fly them or transport them by bus to uh, our partner rescues in different states. So, and they're completely no kill. They have on-site adoptions and we've had a great deal of success. So, you know, in for 2020, we already have uh, eight flights scheduled um, to take place when there's an average of, uh, I think, believe 65 animals per flight. So, you know, on eight, on eight flights that we've got scheduled for this year, we're able to take 520 animals and send them to where they can be adopted as opposed to, you know, sitting, remaining in the shelter and facing the possibility of euthanasia. Okay. So then what you're really saying too, is that um, if these dogs or cats weren't transported somewhere, they could be euthanized if they don't get a foster home or or somebody that will adapt them. Is that correct? That's correct. I mean, you know, we, with all the best of intentions, what's happening is the local adoptions are not meeting the need to reduce the pet population. So when, when as that happens, um, we see that, you know, like I said, these good adoptable animals find themselves, you know, having to be euthanized for the sake of space because the intake just greatly, greatly exceeds, you know, what is what is coming out of the shelter. So we're trying to, you know, flip that on its head by taking these animals and being able to send them somewhere that they'll undoubtedly find, you know, families and homes and right and, and just make, you know, make that change. So um and it's it's tricky. There's a lot of logistical um considerations involved in that. So that's why, you know, bringing Barkhouse in as a facility would be a great help to that, to that cause. So like I said, right now we've been able to do um, for the year eight transports. Once we have the facility and can control the logistics and, you know, the intake and, you know, housing our animals and ensuring that all of them are spayed and neutered and, and ready for uh, ready for transport, we're hoping to upscale that initially 
um, to biweekly transport. So 26 transports a year. So that puts, I believe, the potential number, you know, right out the gates to 1,690 animals that we can put on these transports and send to, you know, uh, no kill rescues where they will be adopted and find their homes. Wow. So that, that scales up. I mean, that's just, that's just right out of the gates. Now our, our goal, once we get the facility running and we start to get, you know, we identify more receivers and, you know, we get that all rolling, we can do weekly transports. Like I said, via bus uh, flights out of the airport here in Las Cruces. And so we're talking over 3,000, 3,300 animals uh, once we can get to our weekly transport goal. Wow. And then, of course, you've got uh, the the dogs that are pregnant in the shelters. And now you've got another program that kind of piggybacks on everything called the last litter. So it really, it, it all fits all together. It's more like a comprehensive, full-service pet facility. That's what Bark House is. Yeah. It so is. What about Sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say, so tell us about Last Litter. What is that about? Well, everything that, you know, we do there is solution-based for, you know, controlling the pet overpopulation issue and solving it. Humanely, of course, you know, we want to make sure that every animal we touch has the opportunity to, you know, end up in a home and, uh, you know, find find their way out of the, the shelter system. So, so. Last litter is a really, really cool um, idea. And it's something that has already been functioning. Um, what we do is we take not just from the shelter, but we also can take, you know, from private owners and things like that. When, when there's a litter that happens and they've, you know, they can no longer uh, take care of it without assistance. We're a resource that they can come to and they can bring us the, the mom and dog, the, the puppies, and we provide neonatal services for the puppies. We make sure that they're taken care of. The mom is there with them up until the point that they can be weaned. Um, the, in order to be eligible for that though, when they bring us the animals, the mama and the puppies, what they're doing is they're bringing them to us and we will, for, we will spay the mama dog. And then of course, take care of the puppies. The spay is important because then we're ensuring that that is that dog's last litter for sure, which is where the name comes from. We want that to be the last litter that that mom will ever have helping with that uh, overpopulation issue, of course. And then uh, that way we're also just not used as, you know, for lack of a better term, a, a dumping ground for people just to continue, you know, bad behavior and, you know, these constant litters of puppies and bringing them. No, we want, we'll take care of them for you. We will, we will uh, take the puppies for you. We'll get them to the point that they are weaned and those animals, those pups will, you know, end up on transports to where they can go and get adopted and find homes. We, we take care of all that. Okay. So based on that, what kind of impact will Bark House have on Southern New Mexico? You know, the impact will be immediate. I mean, we are already doing the transports. We are already showing, you know, we have proof of concept that, you know, we can take a number of animals and and start to, to chip away at, at this and, and start to see the decline in uh, euthanasia rates and things like that. But once we are functioning and we can reach our weekly transport goals and really just act as a resource that, you know, the shelters and these rescues can come to, we can bring in year one, Las Cruces and Southern New Mexico down to absolutely zero kill. That is wow. our ultimate goal, and we can do that in our first year of operation. Oh, so so what is what is the mission? The mission is exactly that: no kill. We don't want to see any animals, good adoptable animals, um, being euthanized just for lack of space. We're going to bring. We want to, you know, bring the shelter population down. We want to make sure that we're educating, um, you know, our our local population and making sure, you know, that they have the resources, convenient uh, resources available to them, that way they can, you know, be the responsible pet owners that I believe people do want to be, but there's these barriers that prevent them from being able to, you know, to see it forward, whether it's, you know, lack of um, educational materials, they don't understand, like you said, why they need to get their pets um, vaccinated, microchip, those kinds of things we want to educate. And then, uh, you know, we want to make sure that people, a barrier isn't in place a financial barrier for them to be able to, you know, receive that spay and neuter for their animal. You know, that's, that is just pivotal in, in order to change the culture of our local area and to solve our problem once and for all and see that, you know, we're not 
needlessly killing animals in our shelters and New Mexico can, you know, achieve that through our mission. Okay. So that brings us now to actually the community, you, you as a community resource. Barkhouse has so many components to it that are all intermingled and uh, interchange with each other. The community resources is, you want to explain that to us? Yeah. So, I mean, when we talk about being a community resource, we, we mean, you know, not just within the animal welfare uh, community, we're talking about the full community. We're talking, you know, with local businesses, we're talking, you know, just different and innovative ways that we can reach out to the population at large. You know, we've got a, we've got a great set of people here um, that are, you know, within our animal welfare and animal, you know, rights community, but, you know, as it is, we're still very niche. So we're trying to reach um, everybody. You know, if I could, if I could literally get into, you know, the ears of everybody, you know, all 100,000 in Las Cruces population, I would love to be able to do that and explain to them what we're doing and what our mission is. Um, and so we're going to, you know, have things available. We're going to have, um, you know, printed materials with education. Of course, we're going to try to put that out there, try to get into schools um, and, and really, really nurture the idea of being a responsible pet owner, you know, f from the ground up. Um, we're going to have things for, you know, where the, the shelter can bring us their overflow animals. If they've got too much, you know, too many animals, they need spayed and neutered, bring them to us. We will take care of it for you because we are solution based. We want to just see it happen and we're willing to take that on. Um, same with rescues. We want to, you know, be there for rescues for when they have needs and they do, they have, you know, if they have any kind of need, like just even just such things like office space where they want to gather their people and have meetings and things like that, just things that aren't always readily available. We want to provide that. Then there's going to be other community things that are going to reach, um, you know, pet owners. We want to have uh, a community food bank where people can come and donate, you know, pet food and things like that for, you know, someone who may, especially right now with, you know, with this whole COVID thing going on, when uncertain things happen and, you know, money is a, is a barrier, people can come to us and, and get the things they need in order to, to keep their pets fed and things like that. So we've got, you know, some ideas that we're, we're ready to, to move forward with, including, you know, foster signups, having a database of, you know, available fosters. There's, there's lots and lots of ways that, you know, Bark House as a central location can really um, affect change. Okay, and then in addition to that, you now have Bark House Live, which is a way for people to see behind the scenes of how you're building Bark House and what is really happening and what tremendous resources it really takes to get it all together. So I commend you on that because people do want to see what's going on behind the scenes. Right now, you've got an open area where these are what this is what you want to do, but hopefully in a very short period of time, Bark House will be up and running and very operational. So uh, I look forward to seeing all the, the, the improvements and additions and, and everything that you're doing with Kelly and you, Coco. Well, thank so, you. Yeah. And, and we're, we're appreciative for, you know, you allowing us, um, you know, to come in here and, and, and talk about, you know, what it is we're doing. We, we think it's very important. We're very excited. We've got a lot of, uh, you know, big things happening and things beginning to move and shake. And, you know, so I, I'm, yeah. I'm, I look forward to sharing this all with, with you and the, you know, the community at large. Okay. And then now what, why is this important to you personally? You know, for me, there's a lot of things, you know, I, I love animals. I've got three rescue dogs of my own that I keep here, you know, and uh, they've come to us. <laughs> We've gotten some from the local shelter and one actually showed up at our, at our doorstep and uh, we ended up adopting it as well. And, you know, it's, I recognize the need and uh, it's just something that's near and dear to my heart, my family, my wife, you know, we all believe in this cause and, you know, it's something that, you know, if we have a resource available, we can make this happen truly. And it's just like, if we can, why don't we? So that's, it's, it's just something that I believe in. I know Kelly believes in, in it deeply. This is something she has really, really been impassioned about. And, you know, that's another thing, you know, my respect and love for Kelly, you know, just bouncing this, you know, back and forth off of each other. It's just like, we have to do this. This is such a good idea. It's gonna be, big for the community and it's going to help so many animals 
you know, reach homes that they should. So it's, it's a, it's a personal project, but you know, it really also falls into wanting to see this happen for Kelly. Well, ditto. I ditto that for sure. So you've got your vision and you've got your mission. And it, it now, what do, what is it going to take? It's going to take investment. It's going to take um, people that are going to roll up their sleeves and say, okay, I'm in. I want to help. It's going to take the community to become aware so we can have more live broadcasts and have some town hall live virtual shows to, so that the community can get involved, the shelters, the fosters, the rescues. Mm -hmm. And um, I can see everybody coming together as a unit and help to build Bark House because really it has been designed not for you and Kelly, but for the community. That's to right. help these animals that are in need. It, you know, it's been a soft subject of mine, or soft subject, been a sore subject of mine for over 50 years already about the overpopulation. And it's it's still the same thing. What can we do? What can we do? When you see that there is a solution and an answer right in front of your eyes, sometimes I do not understand why people don't embrace it and say, I'm all in, I can help. So this is this this is really a show to say, hey, folks, you really should be involved with this, too. Mm -hmm. Right. And and I know that you are the solution and you are ready. You guys are. are ready. <laughs> yes, we are. We, we cannot wait to kick this off because, you know, it's important. And like you say, we can get people on board. And, you know, Las Cruces has a reputation for being a, a very, very generous community. And, uh, you know, there was a, re a recent article that, you know, they're in the top 10 in the nation for, for generosity. And that's, I mean, I, I see it, I see it every day. So, you know, we are, we are a perfect community to get this started in. And I really hope to see, you know, something like this beginning to pop up in communities around the country because we aren't the only community that is, you know, experiencing these issues. So we are ready to, to show what we can do. Okay, well, you know, I is there anything else that you want to leave with telling everyone about this? Or uh, are, are you feeling comfortable that people know what your vision is and know what your mission is? Or do you want to add something else? Um, you know, if they want to learn more about what it is we're doing, tune in to the show. But also, you know, check us out at our website. Um, the website we have set up currently is www.barkhouse-nm.org. Um, you know, we've got a lot more in-depth, um, you know, about what we're doing there. Um, we've, you know, we're trying to put everything out there in a way that people can understand what it is that we're trying to do, the numbers of, you know, what we can achieve and the impact that we can make. So, you know, if this is something that, you know, speaks to you and you you really have a heart for, for animals and uh, want to see you know, more animals adopted and, and less being euthanized in the shelter, you know, get in contact with us. We, we want to hear more ideas. We definitely want to hear from the community, what you think, what other needs can be met. Um, you know, get in touch with us. I would love to hear from you. And uh, I would also love to, to chat with you. If you want to know more um, Coco Dean, find me on Facebook. I'm always willing to talk shop and you know, <laughs> let you know what it is that we're trying to accomplish because it, we believe in it and we're ready to move. Okay. Well, thank you, Coco, for being on the show. And thank you, everyone, for watching Bark House Live. We'll be coming t back to you very, very quickly. And you guys, please contact Bark House. Be part of the team. Be part of the solution. Okay. We already, it, it's it's a, 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 a wish to be able to have a live and a, a livelihood, we, a life and a livelihood. We know that, but these are lives that they can't take care of themselves. They need our help. They are, they are voiceless. And Coco, you and Kelly are giving a voice to the voiceless and what a great idea of Bark House. I'm, I'm, I'm totally in 100%. Well, thank you, Kathy. So, we appreciate you. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you everyone for watching.